Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you might be. Thank you for attending this webinar uh, hosted by AVA. Um, if you're, this is the second webinar, webinar in our series of um, integrations with other technologies. If you remember earlier in the summer, we did a couple of webinars where we showed our integration with Cruise, Metis and Roland on the scanning, editing and proofing side of the decor business. Today, we are thrilled to be joined by Agfa, who have developed a, a wonderful digital printer and color management system. And we'll be hearing about that very shortly. So first of all, uh, introduce, I'm Duncan Ross from AVA. Um, today, I'm being uh, I'm with my colleague, Nick Hope, who's a, a technical expert. And from Agfa, we are joined by Alan Cormond and Tom Klutz. So the format of the webinar will be uh, 15 to 20 minutes uh, general in introduction to AVA and our software tools for editing decor designs. Uh, and it's all geared up to producing a design which will print and color match very nicely to the Agfa interior jet. Um, after that, we'll hand over to Agfa and they can explain their technology uh, to you. The whole webinar is being recorded and we will publish that after the event. And of course, during the webinar, you can ask questions using the chat function. We have people on standby to answer your questions, but if there's time at the end, we will go through the questions methodically. Uh, and of course, here are our contact details. So uh, if you, this, this slide will come up at the end, uh, so don't rush for your pens and paper right now. Uh, this slide will come up at the end so you can ask us questions directly after the webinar. Um, so, without further ado, uh, we will, I'll hand over to, to Nick to share his screen and we will show you how we develop designs to print on the Agfa interior jet printer. As the webinar progresses, I'll be telling you exactly what we have developed to support the Agfa machine and what's different in our software in supporting this technology. Are you there, Nick? Yes, thanks, Duncan. Okay. So uh, we're starting off with a, of course, I, I'm very aware that the audience includes a number of flooring companies, uh, furniture lamination companies, uh, wall covering companies, and other businesses. Uh, of course, the design we're using is, is more tailored towards uh, decor, but obviously this, the same principles that Nick's going to use will apply to uh, your industry. If you're in the, in the business of decorative print, please, uh, please um, accept the design we're using. Uh, it, it will translate to textures, uh, geometrics, florals, etc. So this is a scan which could come off a, uh, a high quality wide format, large format scanner such as Cruise or Metis. And the first feature we want, we'd like to show you, some of you have seen this many times, but the first feature in AVA which is beneficial to the industry is real-time repeating. We, because the uh, interior jet can print up to three meters wide, we can put this into uh, 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 into repeat in coordination with the width of the printer or the rolls that because it is it can also support dual roll so next next thing and take sections of the original scan and put it into a brand new design to create something unique from the original it's a very simple and fast process you may or may not do these functions in other software. Of course, AVA integrates with other applications, uh, but we, we are of the opinion that if you do it like this, it is very fast, very productive. On the, so on the topic of integration, we are increasingly working very close with Adobe Photoshop. So there might be some functions you prefer to do in Photoshop, which is, that, which is absolutely fine. You can hand over to AVA for the real number crunching, which is working with large files at high resolution in repeat. So Nick's just uh, obviously just use it with the help of these grids, we can have the grids visible or invisible or snap to or not snap to, but it really helps put together a, a nice layout. So we're just positioning the panels at different drop amounts. This is working on the real file. It's not a preview. It is actually the high res original file. And what I'm going to point out, which we all AVA users can take for granted, is that color management is always active. So this stage, 
The design in its RGB scan format is color managed to the AGFA interior jet printer. But we will be drilling into more detail on the subject of color and color management as this, uh, as this demo progresses. There are basically three chapters to Nick's part, which is layout and editing, color separation, and I'll talk more about color separation. And the, the largest chapter will be the coloring and color management, making sure the design is nicely matched to the output. Okay, so we now have a unique design from the original. Nick's gonna do some basic editing. We can use the clone brush. We can clone in repeat. We can clone within the repeat. We can clone within a, a mirrored repeat, a contract repeat. And of course, we are really zooming over this part, really uh, moving quickly over this topic. But if there, we can send you movies, we can do a personalized demo if you'd like to really scrutinize this technique in more detail. Nick's using a Wacom tablet. I'm sure many of you have Wacom tablets, but you get that very nice sensitivity with the pen to, to smooth those that texture together. And as you would expect to have in an editing program, we have uh, the uh, partial images, um, uh, filters, blending tools, brushes, um, et cetera, et cetera. Again, uh, to repeat the point, you could do this in Photoshop and bring it into AVA to manipulate the repeat, but you can also do it all in AVA if you wish. So we're just changing certain characteristics, maybe eliminating some knots, um, tidying up some knots, accentuating some knots, etc. And as you see, as Nick moves that partial image around, it is working in repeat. It helps this technique helps you spot some uh, unnecessary noticeable repeating areas, uh, tracking problems, etc. Okay. And, and then the, the next, the one of the, the final parts, we, we thought it'd be nice to add some grout lines. So add a bit more definition to those, to the, where the planks join. And we have uh, a very helpful, we'll use this grid tool again. We've actually in the new 5.5 release, which is with some of you now and being gradually released to our customers over the next two months we have a very nice automatic grouting feature. Okay, very good. So as you, um, I should have pointed out at the beginning, my apologies, if you are viewing our, uh, our faces uh, in Zoom, you may wish to position them from the default on the right to the left because the, 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 the windows of our faces will cover some of the palettes and tools which Nick is using. Um, on the left or at the bottom, I think is probably the, the best point position if you want to see uh, the, the speakers. Some separations now, Duncan. Yes. Um, and, and then just to point out, we are recording the movie. So if you'd like a copy of this, uh, this or we are re recording the webinar. So if you'd like a copy, please let us know, but we will publish it uh, somewhere uh, to be decided. We'll notify you. So separations, color separations. We have some very, very nice color separation tools. And uh, you may or may not be in the business of color separation. You may just wish to edit the image and print it as an image, which is absolutely fine. However, if you do want to, uh, re-engineer the design as a, as a printing pattern, it is a good idea to color separate the design. Uh, if you have future plans to make it a gravure printing pattern, then obviously um, color separation is necessary. But we have some very nice rapid tools to get the desired colors out of the design for you to manipulate it further, for you to assign spot colors to the separations, and really importantly, for you to create colorways of the design. So if you want to create two, three, four, five plus colorways, then color separation is highly advisable. 
We do find in some cases, if you separate design, apply a spot color and print it, it you, you do generally have more control of the color. And in some instances, it can actually print sharper than an image. So with the color separations, these can be automatic, semi-automatic or manual. If we are separating for digital, uh, we may not uh, spend as, as much time critiquing the separations we might do if it was going to gravure, but at least if we get it to three or four colors, five colors, we have a very good starting point uh, and decide we're in a very good position to say, let's test the market with a short digital print run. If it becomes a top seller, we have the confidence to progress these separations to be a gravure printing design. And that really brings in the topic of what we call PCM, which is production color management. Using lots of vital color data, we can make what we see on the screen match the digital proof to the digital print. With the PCM data, we can make that data also match it very closely the Gravure printing press and vice versa. So if, we, if this was a design that we produced 30 years ago, 20 years ago, and we now wanted to produce some new roles for the market where the cylinders don't exist anymore, then we might go digital, but with PCM data, we can make the digital match the original analog and vice versa. But we will touch on that very shortly when we get to the chapter of color. So Nick's making these separations. Uh, he wants to closely um, re-engineer the print to look like the original. Um, of course, that's not always the case in the market. People do separate to re completely re-engineer the print to look differently. In some cases, even better than the original scan. And Nick has control of the overprint. He's looking for heavy and weak areas of mixing color. In this instance, he's picking colors from within the color space of the output device. So we don't necessarily want to choose colors which we know we can't print. The software will alert you if you are choosing a color which cannot be reprinted. And then you have the choice at that stage whether to carry on progressing the job or to choose a color which is printable. It's very important, especially if you've got overprinting color. If you've got too much, too much heavy overprint, uh, that, that might be an instance where you want to have a warning and avoid that. So Nick's using a, uh, a semi-automatic um, tolerance separation tool, which we call advanced color. But obviously, um, um, I must raise the point that AVA can work with spot colors, CMYK channels, and RGB channels simultaneously. So you can have all that data in one file working together. We could make a separation of a, of a reddish channel, but we can also go back to the original red channel of the image to uh, add further boost and character to that color. We can separate for masks or we can separate for channels. It's the same technique. It's entirely your choice. We can, we can start off with a base color and place the spot colors on top. Um, again, if you are printing onto different shades of paper, it's important to know that at the outset and apply that as a, as a base color substrate, which you can do in AVA. You really want to uh, sort of achieve the best possible color match at every stage of the design development. Okay, so Nick has now um, chosen five. Yes, Nick, sorry. I uh, don't, sorry. <laughs> so that's, uh, that's an example of uh, quick separations. Um, you can obviously spend more time, more detail on those separations using blending brushes, filters, uh, lots of blurs, etc. But we just just for speed and to hopefully to uh, keep you engaged in this part of the demo, we just wanted to make it uh, show as much as possible as quickly as possible. Okay, so we're at a really good stage now where we've got a separated design, and one extra little uh, piece of the demo we wanted to put in was the structure. So if you've, if you've started off with a 3D scan from a Cruise or a Metis scanner, for example, it's at this stage, it's a great idea to see how your printed pattern would look, printed structure would look with an emboss, with a texture on top of it. And using our structure simulation software, our 3D uh, structure su simulation software, we can view the design that Nick separated with the original height map. And we can we can edit that height map if it's not coordinating very well or um, if it's 
if it uh, isn't touching the right areas. We can edit it. We can control the height. We can, we can control the glossiness, the reflectiveness. We can also interchange from different grayscales. So what Nick just showed you just then, which uh, Nicky, just mind showing that again, toggling between the two structures. Uh, with this tool, you can actually scan in lots of different height maps and experiment with uh, a height map from a completely different design and coordinate it with this new design. So Nick is uh, experimenting between a, a very scratch saw effect uh, height map to the original grain height map. We think it's, uh, it, it's a really nice feature of, the, of this software for designers to decide what, what sort of emboss do I want? What sort of structure do I want? Uh, where layer effect do I want on, the, on, the, on my pattern? Okay, so that information can be exported um, to the engraving machine, to a digital printer, to a machine that supports chemical liquid emboss or a UV haptic printer. But in this case, we're gonna progress the design to be ready for the Agfa interior jet. So as I said, Nick's in a perfect position to create colorways. The EVA software supports unlimited colorways. The colorway data is so small, you can add many, many hundreds and hundreds of colorways if you wish. Um, they are all appended to the original file. So if I have a design with uh, three colorways, the design is not multiplied three times. It's just the original design, all the pixel data with three associated colorways to it. And it, the file does not bloat at all. So Nick's going to, it can manually change the color within the color space of the output device, in which case this is an Agfa interior jet. We can, we can drag colors from a palette so if you've got a particular palette of trend colors you're working on for the next season, you can easily access those through the um, swatches palette. All our colors have uh, color data, LAB. Uh, LAB is a key element of this presentation when we're working with uh, Agfa. Um, reflectance data, we're also working with CXF color files. Um, the more accurate the color, the better. The more mathematics to it, the better. Um, so Nick can manually change the, the colors that make up the design. He can change multiple color layers simultaneously. So if you like the balance of two or three colors to one another, you can retain that, but also recolor that in a different hue area and ret retain the characteristics between the colors. Now, this is a, a new feature which we're very excited about. Uh, it's called, um, it's a color adjustment layer. And if we want to see the effect of that design being laminated onto a board or the effect of an emboss or effect of a wear layer, we can do a simulation of how that post print process affects the design. So if the effect of lamination makes the design darker, more yellow, for example, more orange, you can set up a lamination preview layer, a color adjustment layer, which simulates that. You can prove that to your studio proofer and then make decisions accordingly. The original file plus this is how it's going to look when it's laminated. I'm sure many of your customers would find that helpful before selecting a design. So that's a new feature in our 5.5 release, uh, which uh, there's also a movie about to be put onto our website, which promotes our 5.5 uh, version and our new features therein. Okay. So Nick has uh, spent time creating some beautiful colorways and let's present them on the page. So if we're doing a presentation, if we want to proof it out or, or send a customer a PDF view of suggested colorways, our layout window enables us to do that. setting up logos we the dynamic whilst next doing that dynamic text is a useful feature. it's been in the software a while but dynamic text essentially allows us to present crucial information about the design text information it's like metadata it allows us to present that on the page for example what the scale of the print is what the resolution is uh, how many colors there are in the design um, the certain color information such as the what overprinting preferences were used etc there's a if you are an AVA user already there's a whole list of dynamic text you can add 
to the print, it's very helpful to know what settings you use when you print it out and presented a design. We can swap colors from one colorway to another, but an, a feature which uh, is, is very attractive with our customers is called the Inspire feature. And it doesn't replace the very important work of manual coloring. There's definitely, a, we, we certainly respect colorists at AVA. It's, it, it's a, a very vital skill to create the unique colorway, color that sells, isn't it? But the software can also accelerate and help the process of coloring uh, in an automatic or semi-automatic way. And we're not suggesting at all that this replaces the role of a colorist, but you can actually get the software to do a bit more of the hard work of choosing uh, unique color combinations. Uh, and Nick is using the Inspire tool. Nick's created a fourth colorway, which is gonna take inspiration from the first colorway. So you can see that it's been duplicated. And by sliding the hue, we can make changes to all the colors or selected colors accordingly. And you might get to a point where maybe four of your colors are working perfectly, but you just need to find that magic number fifth color. And sometimes if we just have the software randomize, randomly select, it can throw up an interesting color combination, which can, we might not have thought of. You can also limit the, uh, the where it's choosing colors from. You can limit to it to a color palette. So you might have a, you might activate a color palette, which has a whole array of uh, shades of gray and have the, the software choose randomly from that uh, gray color palette. And of course the colors should rightly take the credit for a winning colorway, but it's not little, little wink to say a nice little nod to the software for helping them choose a particular color combination. And again, all of this is within the, the color management space of the Agfa Asante uh, color management system and the Agfa interior jet printer. Okay, that looks good, Nick. So we, I talked, we touched on warnings. So the software giving you helpful warnings to say certain colors are out of gamut, in gamut. Well, you'd, you'd, well look, if, unless there's a warning, the software is in gamut. But if, this, if the color is out of gamut, you get a warning on the color chip and you can make a decision accordingly. It's always soft proofing the, the colors to within the color space. But if you wanted a particular color reference and the combination of the printer, the settings, the ink, uh, the, the, uh, the paper uh, doesn't allow you to hit that color, it's important for you to have a warning so you can make a judgment. Also, if the, the effect of overprinting um, is too heavy, is creating a resultant out of, gamut out of gamut color, you need to be warned about that as well. So we have design gamut warnings so this is, uh, this is like a, a virtual mask, which throws itself over the design and show you, shows you result parts of the design which are not gonna print as you've specified. But the idea is if you, if you like it on screen, you can proceed and it will print very closely to that. Or if you want it to be within the desired color, then you can fix that accordingly. You can find a different color that is within gamut. Okay, so um, we talked about matching. Did you, should we touch on PCM now, Nick? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so we, I talked about the importance of matching um, the mainstay of decor production, which is Grivio Printing, the Grivio Printing Press. Um, AVA is set up with a generic Grivio overprinting model, and that, in some cases, gives you an excellent color match to the printing press. However, if you want that match to be as perfect as possible, if you want to reduce the time that you spend matching designs between digital and gravure on the press or a proofing press, then it's, we would recommend you look at upgrading to the PCM level two software, which enables you to activate more production data. And that might be the, uh, a custom overprint based on an ECI target. It might be, uh, the tonal database, which is actually your production ink recipes uh, and the breakdown of those color ink recipes activated in the software, which allows you to match a digital to Gravure and vice versa. But it, it, you, you're able to see that on screen and make judgments accordingly. So what Nick's doing is he's in the important overprint preferences, 
he's moving from a standard um, gravure print model, which we'll be using to print to the uh, AGFA, and he's also saying, well, if I activate my production data, will that match my uh, printing press? So there's different levels of accuracy, whether you use a custom overprint, a basic custom overprint, or a custom overprint plus a tonal database. And it all depends on what, what your goals are. If, you, if, you're, if you'd like to reduce the number of attempts it takes for the printing press to match the digital target um, from maybe a dozen attempts to three or less, then we strongly recommend you look at this PCM software. Okay, so um, now that was, uh, yeah, so the last thing I'm going to touch on is uh, I'm going to set up the AGFA presentation now. So we, we've always admired AGFA uh, for a number of years. Uh, their inks have had a fantastic reputation. It uh, certainly helps with us matching uh, gravure. It helps certainly with metamerism, uh, matching the, the inks that go, go on the gravure printing press. Uh, and as well as their primer. And we're very excited to work with their digital uh, printer, their interior jet. Now, um, what we've done is, as the traditional workflow from AV would be to work with an output device, uh, a profile from an output device. But the, in this case, we're using a, we're printing with a specially designed interchange profile that covers the gamut, which is as large as the normal printer gamut. And it's designed to be accurately invertible this means that the AGFA can accurately re re recover the LAB values for the colors that we're printing. If you use a normal printer profile, you lose about a del one delta E of accuracy when you convert from the values in the design back to LAB. This means that with a normal workflow, you can lose accuracy. And if you move the job, the print job for different printers, you'd need to recalibrate the printer. But you can recover accuracy by reprinting with a new profile, but with the interchange profile, you don't need to do that. So again, we, we, this is all activated in the software and it, this is, we can now pass this design over to the AGFA Asante color management system and duly to the printer. So that concludes the AVA part of the demo, which is, uh, it, we are bang on time to hand over to AGFA and to Alan Cormon. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Ross. Thank you, Duncan. Um, let me jump into exactly following up what uh, you just explained and mentioned. Uh, let's move on uh, with a short movie showing what will happen to the design uh, that uh, Ross just provided. So the movie is, is fairly short, and it starts from importing into Asante the file um, that Ross was preparing. So just copy paste, and the Asante will wake up, will, because um, because he's looking at the directory, and it will start processing. You will see here, we have two process, uh, two PDF render working, starting to run, and at the end of this process, you see on the right side here, the render data available for you to check. You can obviously zoom in as those are rendered data and give you uh, a very accurate uh, perception of what um, Asante did with the file. Once this is done, Asante simply provide a file to the integral jet and this is a you know, just a screenshot of the GUI for the interior jet, where we simply select the file and push the file to uh, the printer. This movie goes over the shuttle on the device, so it's, it's taken from the top, and it's uh, showing how your uh, paper progresses on the devices being uh, rolled out here on the right side on the top you see the output of the device on the bottom side you see the dryer um, we'll zoom in on this uh, in a while just to show how the uh, the paper progresses and end to the dryer making it available for you and for your 
post-production of post-print uh, uh, process. So it's basically uh, what happened, uh, including Asante and uh, obviously uh, the printer. So now, how did we achieve this? Um, and here's a story I just want to bring in, in, in five minutes. Uh, you know, in our software for the industrial printing world, we apply strategic um, state-of-the-art technology at all levels of the production chain, and sometimes proprietary and mostly protected by patents. In all was fine while we are working in our comfort zone, uh, but when several actors join forces uh, to achieve a common goal, this comfort zone is gone. So it demands actually that partners sit down together and open their internal books to start exploring uh, various possibilities. Uh, in this story, um, we are Ava and Aqua joint forces as um, you saw in the first part of this presentation, but not only spurred on by our mutual customer, but also by a common desire to achieve superior quality. So Aqua and Ava both want to connect all elements from design in Ava to prepress in Asante and reach the highest possible color quality printed on our Aqua inject systems. And in this case, you saw the integral jet, uh, we also support Jetai Toro. But basically what will you be able to achieve with this integration? Um, a couple of things basically. Firstly, you will get an affordable way to produce hard copy proofs before building the expensive aluminum cylinders required for gravure printing. In the same way, short runs become affordable and you can now switch between jobs in the blink of an eye. Obviously the last reason will allow you to go one step further in your digital evolution and print your curtains, wallpaper, flooring, uh, all digitally. But before we start, um, when two software systems with different concepts and programming tools use their own way of describing jobs in details, this including the most important attribute of just the color. And we therefore needed to define a way to specify color in a common way, ensuring the highest level of details are captured and from there on propagated from the color, propagating color from one system to another. Was it easy? Certainly not. Was it impossible? No, but it was quite challenging. And indeed, we needed to overcome more than one challenge to reach those goals. For instance, we need to take care of converting spot color, usually part of the gravure process, and translate them perfectly to print on our digital engines. And as an extension of this process, all the colors managed by the joint system must remain accurate and correctly mapped in the target color space at hand. But they also, and even as importantly, need to become visually equivalent on the printed substrate. All this independently of the substrate selected and its colorimetric impact. Now to make things persistent, we are also looking for a solution based on the high level of standardization and as such open for the future. This is why our engineering team decided to base this exchange on an ICC standard. And they selected ECI RGB as a common space uh, as a common color space, it offers the widest color gamut and the visual accuracy. But from there, it allows us to specify the largest possible amount of color, and when I say us, is AVA and ACFA, uh, without losing their precision while passing them over from one system to the other. Uh, to guarantee this precision, color can be measured at both ends, the difference needing to reach a small possible delta E and also visual correction by the human eye is, 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 quite, is quite critical. Those results also need to reach the same quality when lamination is performed and the compressed layer gets added after printing on the substrate. As the effect is different in case of gravure and ingen printing, we need to pay special attention to this process and carefully model the effect of lamination. And to reach this end, we basically target the device twice, before and after lamination, 
and we consolidate the measure taken in the model to anticipate the effect of lamination on the color of the structure. The ticks can become even more complex when the same decor needs to be printed several times on different engines. We need to ensure that the output remains consistent and repeatable at the very same quality level. And we, by reprinting, um, it encompasses different scenario, but it basically consists of printing the same image, the same decor on physically different devices of the same time. It can be then a, a second run that you do, uh, that you perform six months later, um, or it can be printing the decor in parallel on different devices to increase the production capacity. As most parameters remain in change, what we actually do, we manage to include those characteristics elements in the profile to ensure repeatability and such a process um, is managed today in an extension module of our uh, color management toolset. Controlling quality is also necessary on the device itself, obviously, but also within the color management system, guaranteeing the color reproduction and ensuring uh, print fidelity. In a nutshell, we want to detect where divergence occur and estimate the effect of the divergences on the final printed product. Um, and we are currently building an objective measurement tool, which will check the color consistency of a press based on normal uh, distributed data for LAB uh, and everything them over several independent measurements. Well, that, that's what we, that's work in progress. And the screenshot shown on the last slides are taken from uh, Printune, which is our current software we use for controlling uh, the print uh, process. But getting back to our customer case, um, the proof of the pudding is always in the eating. In other words, our eyes will also participate in the evaluation of the result. And um, here is what we did, as we, we saw in the movie with Ava providing data and Asante processing uh, those data using our a color management system, standard color management system, or the CMS, the setup is the standard one used in Asante. Um, but firstly, we input different color bars. We input wedges uh, and let them pass through the system for internet testing. And we print them on the water-based interior jet and the UV LED-based Jetai Toro inkjet. All those printing devices to be able to measure and validate color fidelity. And in the second phase, obviously, this common piece of technology was deployed at an interior decoration manufacturer who looked at it with his eyes, the, the eyes of an end consumer, actually, and acknowledged the quality of the result reach. Uh, and to say the least, they were very, very, very pleased uh, with what they say. I, I think they can, can confirm that as well. Um, and this completed the story. This, this completed the circle, the circle is formed. And this is what I basically wanted to share with you today. So let me once more thank you for your interest and give the work to Tom, who will, uh, will discuss the business advantages uh, offered by this technology. Tom, back to you. Yep. I hope you can all hear me. Uh, thank you, Alain, and uh, also thank you, Duncan, uh, for having us here on uh, the AVA event and uh, to allow us to present our materials. Um, I hope you can all see the screen now. Um, so what I like to do is uh, talk a bit more on the business side of things. And uh, I know many companies are thinking of investing in digital uh, printing for decor and, and they're not sure whether they should start, what to do. Uh, there's multiple options, single pass, multi-pass. Uh, people, uh, some people are, are looking into the market and I try to give a bit uh, our view on the things. Uh, why now? Because we think now is indeed a, a good and right timing to do it. And there are some driving, uh, driving factors, uh, items that happening. So first of all, uh, the customer behavior is changing. It's changing by the internet, it's changing by all the options uh, that are existing now. And I'll show some examples and, and this, this uh, leads to shorter run lengths. Uh, and, and 
shorter run lengths and not the massive uh, 5 million square meter of the same decor, but demand for a few hundred kilograms of paper uh, is, is what the decor industry uh, wants to, to look up of, of new options there. So the gravure printer, gravure is a technology used today and I've, I've seen there's gravure printers amongst the audience as well. Um, they, they're struggling with working capital, with warehouses full of cylinders. Uh, they have a large inventory of, of printed rolls. These, these rolls end up then at the floor manufacturer or the furniture manufacturer who again has inventories. Uh, the printing process itself uh, is an ink mixing facility. They have ink waste, they have high startup costs and idle times. And, and what a gravure printer would need to accommodate with these new customer behavior trends is uh, print on demand to get really just in time uh, and a low cost to print shorter runs. Uh, also, e-commerce is something popping up in the customer behavior. Uh, that means on the fly job changeover and don't have the idle time. Uh, the third driver is besides the fact that the industry and the customers uh, are needing it is that there are strong advances in the digital printing market and, and a lot is, been, is ready now as you also have seen uh, from the first part of the presentation uh, we can clearly see uh, very uh, good features developed in the software part of it to make sure you can do the designing. So why is customer behaving customers are uh, looking now into augmented reality. So there's tools, there's applications you can just have on your smartphone, take pictures of your room and change the floor in it. This is all coming up. And what this does is that customers are capable of choosing from a much larger set of SKUs than in a normal store. And this will in the end lead to uh, shorter run lengths. Now the shorter run lengths is an issue for gravure because if we look at this uh, cost curve, uh, it's it's an example uh, on the economics of printing today. Gravure is uh, today a technology which is highly advanced, but which is very expensive if you need short runs. And on the bottom, you can see the number of tons of paper. And you can also see that the cost per square meter will increase fastly if you go to the shorter volumes because you have the setup times, uh, you need to make the cylinders, uh, you need to get it to the right color, the gravure. So it takes, it takes time and it costs money. Yeah? And now there's inkjet. Uh, inkjet as a digital printing on two levels. On the green curve, you can see the cost of what we call inkjet multipass. Uh, multipass, and I saw also one of the uh, questions in the in the questionnaire list. Uh, our device that we show the interior jet is a multipass device, uh, but a high-end multipass capable of uh, printing in two passes. A multipass device is somewhat slower, is a bit more expensive, but is a lot more forgiving in quality and in uh, it will have much less defects than other technologies. So it's a better technology dedicated for the shorter run. So we look here, printing run lengths of up to five tons with a multi-pass system. There's also single pass system. In single pass systems, the heads are positioned over the web and they will print everything in one go. And it will go very fast. These are very high fast printers, but that also means you need high volumes to load them and to make them cost efficient. So these are printers used for the longer runs. And what is actually happening today, if you look, well, the small part up to one ton, uh, you should do inkjet only. That's, that's about what it is. There's 50% of all runs. If you look up to the five ton, that's an estimation. And then uh, you can use the, uh, you can use the multi-pass systems. If you want to do very, very long runs and you want to go all the way, their single pass. Just telling that next to the customer behavior and the, and the demand for shorter run, that the printers are available and are ready now. Now, how is ACFA in this and how, where do we come from? And, and we started uh, around 2005 with our first developments for the, for the flooring and furniture market. And we started um, water-based developments. We started UV developments. So we did direct printing to boards. And then uh, we came to the need of, of water-based to print also on the paper to match the lamination process. Um, in 2015, we then uh, 
were fully in the design of this interior jet device, which was uh, uh, going into first betas in 2018 and now is officially in 2020 formally released, uh, the interior jet 3300 system uh, looking a bit like this. So this system is now readily available. It's uh, tested at multiple uh, locations and multiple betas. And it's proven also that the output of what we make can be used in the normal standard uh, impregnation and lamination process uh, with a very large color gamut and a very high speed. And then it leads me too far to go in depth into everything this printer can do, but you can uh, find it back on our uh, website and all the information is there available. Or you can contact me also after the call, we'll, we'll get back to you. Uh, we can give you a uh, personal demo, live demo, give you more information so we can discuss this as a whole. But in general, this is the message. It's, uh, it's ready for production. And I embedded a short movie, very short, uh, hopefully with some audio coming through. As, as you can see from this movie, and, and you can find also the movie on uh, on our site uh, if you want to look at it later again. Uh, it, it is a, a high-end device capable of handling very large rolls, uh, two rolls in parallel of one meter fifty-five, and uh, high-speed multi-pass printing. Um, what can be done with devices like this? You can print what is called rainbow rolls. You can do multiple small orders that can be printed on one big roll. Uh, you don't need to print the full roll with the same design. Uh, it's agile to the market. That's what it allows you. You can do fast changeover uh, and you have a low cost also if you want to do test marketing, uh, test markets if you want to print short volumes, uh, trying items. It also allows you if you have multiple designs, much more short run and you have uh, some products which you only would sell about 100 kilo per month, you don't need to make three tons in gravure and have 30 30 months of stock, you can just do uh, every month and print exactly what you need for that month. Um, you can go rapid in the design phase. Yeah. So that means that, that uh, because you can do the testing, uh, you can immediately make it very fast. You can do it in between. As we have two roles, you can keep one role for your production. And on the other one, you can add, for example, the rainbow. So they're, they're driven uh, separately. And as was already mentioned, reprint, which is a very important thing. This, this is becoming actually quite easy. So the, the software tools, which were mentioned by, by Alain, Duncan, they allow you to do the reprint in a very efficient and good way and always get to the same result. You don't need to restart color mixing to be sure you have exactly the same than you had before uh, because it's data driven. It's not, it's not analog. So that helps a lot. And these are all new business enablers to take into account. 
maybe some examples of what uh, some of our customers are doing. And I have here some images from uh, from Dylon in uh, in China and DY, uh, very high end companies, high quality driven companies. And you can see that they could expand their portfolio to new designs, to very special designs, um, which were not that easy before or even impossible before and now are allowed to do this by, uh, by digital. Because also some of the customers want to have bespoke items. As you can see, there's some more examples here of uh, sport uh, cabinets, of toilets, restrooms, which are equipped with digital uh, printers, gym lockers. Uh, so this, this allows you to really go very far. So in summary, um, the market demands it, the customer behavior is changing. Um, the printers are ready. Uh, I now presented to you the, the multi-pass system from ACFA, the interior jet, but there's also single pass systems, as I briefly explained, very uh, fast system. An example here is the König and Bauer machine. Um, this is, uh, you can see a human being standing there as well, somewhere in the picture on the left. So this is a much larger machine printing at extremely high speeds. But the nice thing is here that we can undrive all these devices with our ACFA inks that are also tested by end users and by our customers to perfectly match the impregnation and the lamination. So in summary, it is ready. The market wants it. The software is there, the tools are there, we can link to Gravure, we can link to R&D machines, we can link to high-end, to single-pass, multi-pass. So that's the reason why I think now is a good time to start investing in digital printing. Uh, it's ready and we are ready there also to, to help you and to give you more information if required. I'm now handing back to, uh, to Duncan. That's great, Bo and Alain, thank you very much. Uh, we, uh, we had a few questions um, through your presentation, Tom. Uh, okay. One question was about the, the linear meter output of the interior jet. Well, we, we, uh, we talk in square meters output. Uh, so we do around uh, 340 square meters per hour. Uh, if you take into account that the uh, print width, in this case, a 340 would be a, a two times a five foot roll. So you could divide it by, by three. So that would be a 111 meter per uh, linear. That's, but we print on two, two separate rolls. Again, all the specifications can also be found uh, on, on our website, um, but uh, more than happy also to, to comment and to explain later if you need a personal call. Okay. And there was another question about the ink. So in the interior jet case, it's a water-based pigment, isn't it? Yes, it's water-based pigment. And um, the, the nice thing about ACFA, ACFA is, is actually, we, we're a chemical company. Chemistry is, is also in our DNA. We also have a very strong software and equipment because uh, I see Alain already reacting that we're not only chemical, that's clear, but, but the original is, is the chemistry. So what we did is we adapted our inks to perfectly match with the requirements from the industry of impregnation and lamination, but also to match with what the gravure is doing today. So we, we've chosen similar pigments or same pigments than that are used in gravure technology today. We also don't use a magenta ink as regular printers do, but we use in this case a red ink, which is a patent a technology we have from ACFA to make sure that you can as close as possible match what a gravure printer can do and uh, to get as close as possible to the, the color gamut that is required in this industry. And that's why we, we have these, indeed, these pigmented inks. Uh, we also look at the metamory aspects. And uh, so that's, that's a bit of ink development for ACFA. We, we three think is an important part of the whole process. Uh, and that ink then can also be used not only on our own system, but we also look to, to do it on single pass systems and even to provide solutions for uh, the laboratory where you have a very small printer. We can see how we can help our customers there to have a uniform color gamut over the full length. Yeah, okay. You, do you have uh, a UV solution as well, Tom? 
Uh, yes, uh, Duncan, we do have a uh, UV solution as well. Um, what we see in this market is that UV uh, is used in uh, in flooring and furniture panels, but it's used in the very short run. So UV usually tends to be uh, more expensive as a total and is not entirely compatible with the post-processing process. So with the lamination and the impregnation. Uh, so the UV systems uh, are used to make specials, one-offs, if you need a logo on an existing tabletop or on a panel, or if you really only need one panel, it may be a very good solution. So what we see, uh, is that it's happening. Uh, there's customers doing it. There's, there's also people uh, supplying higher end devices in that range. But we have a similar version than what you see in interior jet for UV. So we can do that as well. Slightly different market segment, I would say. Okay. So I've got one more question for Tom and one question for Alan. Um, so Tom, the machine is, is it standard dual roll or can you have it set up to have one three meter wide roll? No, today, the version we have today is a standard dual roll. It's dual uh, roll. aiming at the four and five foot market. Uh, so it does uh, two rolls in parallel. The reason we have a dual roll is first of all, to increase the speed because then you can print two rolls at the same time. But the major reason to separate it because if you have one roll and you put two separate rolls on it, then you have some slight deviations in the very long roll. And that will lead to small color shifts uh, in the end products compared to the left and the right roll. And that is what our customers have uh, told us in the past and many times that they do not want any color variations over the roll and one roll to another. So okay. this is why we have chosen to separate the whole system under that big printer into two fully separated lines allowing us to minimize all deviations that are mechanically uh, uh, present to get a perfect uh, comparable color output over the two rolls. Um, so today that's the situation, but uh, if there's a lot of demand for a bigger version or another version, of course, uh, at ACFA, we are, we are also always open to talk with the customers to see if we can, uh, can help in uh, designing new products for, for our customer base. Okay. Thanks, Tom. And the question for Alan is about the interchange profile, uh, how you build it and how it represents different substrates, Alan. Well, then, can obviously, um, what I show in the movie is a, a system which is ready and where everything is configured. Um, but during the installation uh, step and the configuration step, we will look into those profiles and we make sure that interchange is uh, um, properly you know, matching and working together. So we provide effectively uh, the tools uh, that are needed for this. Um, yeah. But it, it's, it remains a very easy to use product. That's the goal uh, to avoid the complexity there for the end user, yeah. for the printer. So as I understand it, if you had, if you were printing onto a, uh, a beige paper and then you were later in the day, you were printing onto a, a brown paper, you'd there'd be two interchange profiles, wouldn't there? Well, we can, um, um, well, what, what, we, what we do, um, um, Duncan, is, is with our uh, CPM, we are, uh, we are able to profile the device uh, as well as a media, as a substrate, right? Um, CPM is what? Uh, Just for the audience benefit, Alan. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I, <laughs> in, indeed. Um, we have a patented technology called uh, CPM, and it goes for calibrated printing mode. Okay. And a calibrated printing mode is uh, a set of uh, three parameters, including the device, the quality, and the substrates. And uh, for this, we, um, we simply measure a very small a wedge um, of color, and from there on, we can uh, calibrate then the device properly uh, using the same uh, um, color space that we use and the same standard between Ava and Asante. Okay. All right. Okay. And uh, Tom, there's a question about the cost of the press. That's a... Uh... Yes, I'm, I'm not muted. That's a very, a very good question, uh, which is uh, not something, of course, we just 
show in a full uh, full webinar because it's depending on your requirements as a customer and on, on what you will be doing, how much you will be printing. But what we do see is that uh, we find break-even points with gravure printing uh, up to three tons of paper. So that gives you an indication of the pricing. But most of our customers do print runs with this between 100 kilo and one ton. Uh, then they're always more cost efficient, but uh, it can go up to three ton depending on the design. So I think at best you you contact us. Um, we go through the typical files you want to print and to look what you want to what you want to do. And it's something we uh, we best do offline and not in a in a broad uh, audience. Okay. Well, we got your contact details there, Tom. Yes. Uh, question ahead. Um... It requires an individual wedge for each design or just each substrate is the question for Alan. Again, muting it. Um, it's, for, it's for each substrate, um, if you target the same device actually, right? Um, so just to summarize from Ava to Asante, you use only uh, one uh, profile there and we calibrate depending on the uh, substrate you will be using um, uh, and the quality you want. Uh, that's part of what I call the CPM, the calibrated printing mode. Once okay. this is done for your two or three substrates, um, the system will do the rest actually. Okay, okay. okay. Um, so the, the it's attendee asking the questions. If, if that doesn't answer your question entirely, please contact myself, Nick or Alan separately and we'll, we'll give you further details. Um, okay, so what time we are? We are, are bang on time, so that concludes the webinar. Thank you so much, everybody, for your time and attention, your interest. Um, we look forward to hearing from you. That that concludes the uh, for AVA. That concludes our, our year of webinars promoting our our new partners. Um, so, as I mentioned earlier in the summer, we did the webinar with Cruz, Metis, and Roland on the haptic printing. Uh, I think this nicely concludes that series with. Uh, outputting to um, multi-pass and single-pass printers. Um, and we hope to announce some more exciting webinars in the new year. So at this point, I we wish you thank you, a very happy Christmas and the best of the new year. And we hope to see you all in person at some point next year. Thank you, everybody. Mm -hmm.